Jim Kramer is here on set now. Jim, I mean, it does get to this, this, I guess, this fundamental question, if you take a step back, which is, uh, is there something wrong with all of Europe? Do they not write down those debts enough? Do they have a broader problem with their economy? Or is this just a, a, a over-extrapolation from one small no, country? No. Which is it? I mean, we said last night on the show, it, people from home can't play this. This is a very sophisticated hedge fund game. Yep. And you just kind of, I don't want to say turn it off, because obviously you want to watch it. It's a... But it's become a spectator sport. You really can't. Most of the, uh, the retail investors who watch my show, you really can't play But in their this confident get, confidence, as you know, we've been talking all day about these stronger than expected readings in various consumer confidence right. surveys. Well, they're, they're really meaningless because it's a hedge fund game. And until but, it's, you have to break the, you have to bring back the drachma or Tr Trisha has to come out and say the right. euro is broken. Until then, each uh, hedge, hedge funds are just going to try to break Italy and they'll try to break Spain. Right. There is no resolution yeah. until these countries funds, are broken. It yeah. may be hedge funds playing, but the problem is everyone else is watching and they're seeing these big negative Thanks, numbers and their confidence gets affected and then maybe their spending gets affected and it does actually become something that oh, feeds it is. through. I mean, what, how do oh, we no, the uh, risk no, of that? It, That's all it's, it's, yeah. Look, it, it's, I would, look I, mm -hmm. if it were... If I felt it was an opportunity, I would say, look, other than rotational names like a Pepsi or a Dr. Pepper, just, uh, you know, just go start picking here. Mm -hmm. I felt that there was levels to pick that was wrong. It was too early. I've been saying, listen, if you look at really quality industrials, maybe dip your toe in the water. It's obviously not working, so you got to pull back. I do believe that there mm -hmm. is that this is not the right time in terms of our previous guest was saying, listen, nobody is in strong enough shape other than the Chinese to take this, and the Chinese will now have to, they don't even know, the government doesn't have to worry about slowing itself, its own country down, the right. rest of the world will slow it down. So it's just not a great level, it's not an interesting level okay. to pick, it's just not a good level to get involved. Here's my, um, here's my other question, you know, which, and it comes back to the point Steve raised and, and everyone was starting to weigh in on, which is either is the market not paid attention or are they disregarding out of uh, a lack of credibility at the European Central Bank the comments that Trichet made. I think which it's the is, So you think I, it, so now that almost well, is more serious. Seen, if you don't have, have confidence or credibility for the European Central Bank, that is a, a much bigger problem. We need a default. Problem. I mean, everybody knows that. The banks, you know, everybody's going to, all the money, the, the trillions of dollars of hot money is going to keep pressing until they get a default. Mm -hmm. Once we get a default, then you, the euro will stabilize and it'll be interesting again. When I say interesting, meaning that when you buy a stock, you won't yep. get the report and discover you're down $2 from where you bought it, which is what's happening right Rick now. Rick Santelli? Yeah, the euro versus the dollar just cracked under 126. I'm sure we're hitting sell stops. We're hitting we knockouts are. in the over-the-counter market. They're all, of course, watching the euro versus the yen as well. Same picture from a slightly different perspective. And, of course, you can see as the euro and the equities, they are ping-ponging back off each other. And Jim Cramer is spot on. If you are a retail investor, don't touch the TV, but also don't touch your telephone and call your broker. He's not a good thing. To do. Well, Thank Jim, you, Rick. Rick Jim, look right. where, but look at where we are. See, this is this is my question. But interesting level. It's not a level. But you're right down. Here. We have not seen a day like this, and I don't have the exact date. Right. But the, it, clearly, what you're seeing now is since what last uh, March when we hit the market right. lows, or the fall of uh, of 2008. You're down 560 points. Oh. People are seeing this, and those memories of fear are coming back, right. and that's what can become self fulfilling. That, that, I think that's true. Look, I'm sure, I mean, I, I was looking at some, I know this sounds boring, but some master limited partnerships that are selling. Jim, I'm sorry to interrupt. Seven, eight. Ma Matt Nesto has uh, some breaking news. Matt? We have so many statistics here as this market unravels. Uh, Peter Schack, now sitting next to me, just pointed out that the benchmarks have all lost their gains on a year-to-date basis. This 500-plus uh, point for we uh, loss that we've seen for the Dow uh, is the biggest day, the biggest one-day loss that we've seen uh, since uh, December 1st of 2008. These statistics, as the market weakens up even more, uh, will probably become outdated. We'll have to refresh them. Right before my eyes, Aaron, I just saw. I mentioned earlier that the 50-day average got taken out yesterday in the S&P. We just took out the 100. We have just taken out the 200-day moving average uh, in the S&P 500, uh, which is a very, very substantial and significant breakdown of technical okay, support. Okay, where, where, where are we? Market, We're going to get walked up. It's a fast some, market. It's a very fast market. That's very well, clear. I, mean, like, I want to know, where do we start hitting curves? I mean, you're now dropping uh, right. three or 400 points here in the past few minutes. Well, I mean, like when I came down, it was not an interesting level. Suddenly, mm -hmm. it's down 300 more from when I sat down. You're getting a little more interesting. It was less than the market. It's down 750 points. That would well. 
Aaron, fall of you know, obviously, Aaron, if I can, if I can just say day, something there, Aaron. There? I'm not, yeah. Uh, well, we've also just uh, looked at the website of the New York Stock Exchange. Circuit breakers don't kick in after 2.30, just to right. FYI, I throw that out there. Uh, that is a fair point. Scott, you're there. What, what, is, what is the talk? What happens from here? And what are people saying? Now you're down 800. Yeah, I just went through the December. Yeah, Aaron, and they're saying, when I asked them what the heck is going on down here, uh, I don't know. There is fear. This is capitulation, really. I mean, it is classic capitulation. There is fear in this market. You can take a look at what has happened with the VIX absolutely exploding today. You have seen a flight to safety within gold, a flight to quality no, within treasury, a flight, a flight out of equities from almost every single major sector. We have seen it accelerate throughout the day, and that's why right now we're sitting down 875 points, Aaron. We've now broken uh, Dow 10,000. As you can, we're down nearly 900. Smart. I mean, you know, it was 400 you... points ago. I, I was 500 points ago when I sat down. It wasn't of interest. Kind you of know, interest here. Kind of a little yeah. bit. Michelle yeah. Michelle yeah. Michelle yeah. Michelle there, there was, there was, there was a moment yeah. today. Mohammed Al Aryan was on Power Lunch today, right. and and here's the one thing that he said that kind of got us all very Sterling. uneasy is when he said, "We've been talking to banks in Europe, and now, now remember back during Lehman when people didn't want right. to lend to each other because of Lehman. Now it's." That's what's happening right, to European right. banks. So overnight rates are starting to climb. They're starting to get nervous. And you're seeing right. fragility in the credit system right. there. And there's concern that we get fragility in the credit right. system so here. Mean, we're not in the right. same position. We got a lot more capital in the banks than we right. did before. But we're also much higher. I mean, if a Lehman, if a Lehman I don't want to mention okay. any particular European banks, but if a, when Lehman collapsed, it wasn't a buying opportunity until the next day. You know, I mean, you okay. can't really just go in. We are going to pull up a Damn chart a as soon as we can. Here, here's a chart I want to pull up because what we're seeing right now, I mean, it, it, it maybe I, I believe maybe unprecedented. You're down. Talk about capitulation. Let's take a look at P and G. All right, this is going to say everything. P and G is now down 25 oh, percent. Well, if that's true, if okay. that stock is there, you just go but and buy it. That can't ago, be there. A few that is not a real ago, price. That stock was down. Oh, well, 2%. just go buy Procter. All right, this is an unprecedented. Just go buy thing Procter and Gamble. They're poor so, a decent well, then, quarter. Yeah, is just there go a buy hedge it. fund that is liquidating? Is there uh, a distress? Is there something else that's happening? A 49 and a quarter bid for 50,000 Procter. If I were at my hedge fund, I mean, this is a good opportunity. They were just taking. The point. I mean, that's an incredible. I mean, that name. I mean, nothing I has out, it was for Procter Gamble in the past well, see, four minutes. When I, when I walked out, it was a 61. I'm not that interested in it. It's at 47. Well, that's a different security entirely. So what you have to do, though, you have to use limit orders because Procter just jumped seven points. That I said I liked it at 49. <laughs> so I mean, you know, you got to be careful. This when, when Rick Santelli was saying, look, you know, this is dangerous market. What I am saying is, you put in a 49 bid for 200 shares of Procter, and if you get hit, right. fine. This is very much 1987, like a little different from from, nine, from 2007. Like. So in 1987, there was, a, there was a breakdown where Procter goes from, say, 50 to 12, yep. all right? And, you know, you want to be there at 13. I mean, you know, Wait, look okay, at now it. Procter look just at it. don't look at it. It's, it's a fast market. Yes. It's a fast market. the market was so down 900 it, points. Hey, We're now down 688. So remember, I buy 50,049. I now flip it at 59. I just made... I just paid 500 oh G's. I mean, just you got to be very careful here. Somebody just made The guy somebody watched the show. He did 50. He did 50 50. So, again, use limit orders. And, you know, pick among stocks. And we just jumped 300 points, so that kind of golden I mean, opportunity that, left. Because when we saw the product and you said buy it, and somebody did. And by well, the way, let's find out who that was, because that's going to be that one guy got darn That guy owes story. me a lot. Scott I went Walker. dinner tonight at Roots. Scott, <laughs> Scott, what, uh, what other names, Sam, what are they saying at the P&G post? No, I just grabbed uh, Peter Costa down here because, again, as you're walking around here trying to figure out how the market in such a short period of time so took such a big leg down, Peter, that had all the makings of the capitulation that we talk about that we we're perhaps looking for in this kind of a downward move. Well, you know what it is? It's a capitulation with, with no bid side. I mean, there's nothing, there's, you know, you have um, a void in stocks, points down. So that's why the market traded the way it was. The, the, all the buyers that were in the market earlier today, gone. Anybody who had any interest in buying anything, gone. Everybody's now on the sell side, selling it out, no bid side. And the next thing you know, we're down 500. You know, we went down almost 600 points. No, we were down, we were down 900 points right, uh, we plus went, in total. We dipped below 10,000 again, right. I should might add. We had a very nice bounce off of the worst levels. Does that tell you anything? That just tells me that now there's bargain hunters. You know, everyone's still saying, you know what, let's see if we can make some money here. Or there might have been guys shorting it on the way down. It's, you know, who knows? It's, it, we, the one thing we can say, though, is we have a, a very large volume, which in any kind of market move is a, is a, sign, of, it's a sign of a major move. 
we're at 1.6 billion or 1.5 billion here, uh, and, and it's only two. It's only three o'clock. I mean, that, that's right. a lot. Okay. So we have some serious volume. You're right? going to be a busy man at the close. I'll yes. let you go. Guys, Thanks. I'll send it back to you. If, and take a look, by the way, at the total volume and certainly the down volume versus the up volume. It tells quite a story about what's happening down here. Aaron? Okay, now, 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 I got it. Let's pull P&G back up. All right, it was down, what, 23%. Then four minutes later, it was down 24%. Then we made that yeah. comment of that is absurd. What is? Well, well, I mean, the, the machines obviously broke. The system the broke down. I mean, but now, now, it broke now, down. We'll have a big it. investigation. But in now it may possibly go. But there should be an investigation of because there should that's, be. That's why I, I say this is like yeah. there was a 1984 episode like this, a 1985 episode where the machines broke. You got your opportunity. That Monday the right. machines broke in '87. It's too bad the system obviously broke down when we, it went down 400. We're we going to find out that there was a glitch in the tape. There was a glitch in the tape. The machines failed. We should talk to Duncan Niederauer. Find out what. Let me just say though. I took P&G as an example. Yeah, I'm, I mean, so I'm not trying to say that was the only one that that happened with. Right. 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 You know, now we'll have a big investigation of the special system, whatever. I mean, here's what I'm saying, is that you go and you take... No, come on. It obviously yeah, broke the down. Market just it obviously broke down. No, the minutes. market didn't work. It broke down. The machines broke down. That's what happened. Maybe you know, Proctor was never at 47. Step, maybe the specialist never stepped in as the buyer right. well, of last resort was like never, supposed to? Proctor was never at 47. Or if it was at 47, it was for a blink of the eye and some one of these fast pool traders got it. I would urge people at home, if, as we go down again, and obviously that down 1,000 level is kind of a moment of great opportunity. But look for stocks that were yielding 2% that are now yielding 5 6% oh, in, an hour, in an hour's time. That's where the okay. opportunity comes in because we're getting the same kind of bounce off of accidental high yields that we got in 2007, mm -hmm. which was indeed the worst case scenario. All right, I just want to make sure I go through one thing here, too, as, as we're just monitoring what happened. Market, obviously, is now down only 519 right. points. Only 519 points. The fact that I had to put well, that... So, it's nearly 50% improvement. It's a nearly an off the improvement. Yes. Just so you know... Right, stocks were never at those levels. They weren't at those but levels. But do you realize the fact that after all this, that that could have just happened is an absolutely stupendous story? Well, it is. I think it it's is. a great story. It's the greatest story never told. You'll never know what happened there. That, that, it's important. Right, we don't have to go getting... But really go. I mean, again, story, what we wanted to do was apparable. Why, what, again, why, we wanted to do was possible that there wasn't somebody okay. trying to liquidate the system huge broke. positions. Bob broke Bassani, for 30 seconds. Bob Bassani's on a trading floor right now. Bob, can you just say what happened in that five-minute time frame on that trading floor? Well, it, it's been pretty crazy and pretty. All of a sudden, it went from fairly quiet to a lot of screaming. I'm, I'm trying to grab Steve Starker here, who runs the trading desk right here. He's a, a little bit busy at the moment. Steve, what did you see? What was going on? We saw some real panic, a little below 11,000 on a quick dip. Guys came in to buy gold in a, in a hurry, uh, trying to buy some protection. And, uh, and literally, when, as soon as they bounced, you couldn't buy anything for points. Things were just gapping up dollars, and all of a sudden, there was no supply. And the important thing to be, once we split through that 1150 level, which is a, a very active strike level, Steve, we started to see a pickup in activity. Big, 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 big volume on the way down. There was panic selling on the way down, and all of a sudden, it just stopped on a dime and turned off. And all of a sudden, all of a sudden here, we started hearing screaming, buy, buy, buy orders, our, Steve. Our, what was, our, what our, was our going orders. on at that moment? All of a sudden, I, everybody started getting buy orders coming in down here. What happened? We must have been, we must have been 20 to Number 1 on the buy side. Or two. It looks like Number a triple to 11,000 caused panic buying. Guys just started to step in and start to buy, buy every day across the board. All Tech right, and financials a, mostly. Eric, Tech and financials. It's going to be a fascinating last hour. I'll be here on the trading desk. We'll be talking with traders all through that hour. Right, let's bring in Bill Schmitz. He's a P&G analyst. Uh, Bill, I know you're with us on the phone. Um, what what happened with P&G? Is there any rational way that you could describe P&G being down 3% and then down 25 within, uh, what was it, 90 seconds to three minutes? No, I, the machines have to be broken. I mean, there's, there's no fundamental reason for Proctor to be down more than 2% today. This should be a day where Proctor shines on a relative basis. So, um, so, so somebody made a whole lot of money, uh, obviously, and when that stock went back to break even. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, good. Like I said, no fundamental reason for the stock to move like that. Jim? Right. You went well, the machines broke. I mean, it, it happens. So this was just a, look, there's a lot of machines that go, and there was a technical breakdown, and someone wasn't there at the moment. You think that with humans, you should, should have been able to prevent that. But I, right. I want to stress the fact that if it traded at 47, I bet it traded for like 1,000 shares, and people shouldn't feel like it's a big ripoff. The machines broke. Here's my question, uh, and I don't know, Bill, whether you would know the answer to this or Jim. Um, are those trades going to count? I mean, if you know somebody made a whole lot of money, but right. the machine was broken, do those trades count? Do they not count? What historically, happens? Historically, they count. They count. Yeah, historically, they count. How do you know the machine's broken? Well, because you don't. Procter Gamble doesn't go down 15 points in maybe 
six we, or seven seconds. We yeah, need, th think of it in terms of market cap. Well, what was that? Thirty-five billion of yeah. market cap. I mean, I was, you know, Colgate could have bid for Procter in that thirty seconds. I mean, right. you know, we got to be a little more realistic. The, obviously, the system broke down. We'll hear about why. Now, I think we should speak more realistically about what you can do down four hundred. Down four hundred. Obviously, we we now feel very fragile about the system. Again, if you can find a stock that yields five, six, seven in the two thousand seven to two thousand nine downturn, those held up. They were accidental high yielders. Everything else kind of collapsed. So. I would look for that if you're trying to look for opportunity. I would not try to look on a price basis, just mm -hmm. on a yield basis, because you need that protection in a wild market like this. All right, we got Andy Bush. Let's bring you in. Yeah, Aaron, I'm right by Post 8U, and this is where Procter & Gamble trades. I know you guys were talking about uh, the movement, the dramatic movement in that stock, and there was a sizable group gathered around here uh, talking about the very issue. And what I'm told down here on the floor is that uh, a movement like that, uh, or, or a mistake of a trade, if you will, a bad trade made down here, would be rather unlikely given some of the protections that they have in place. Of course, you know that the way that many stocks are traded now electronically, I think it was uh, Jim who mentioned, could be a software glitch. I mean, right. it could be anything the, yeah. in some of these electronic markets that take place. It, it, it may not have been there. We had that once before in the fast exactly. market in 2008 where the prices weren't real. Mm -hmm. That notion about the, the there was an amendment slipped in that I don't think is going to make it for a 25 basis point, right. basically a tax, that, uh, mm -hmm. in order to be able to allow banks to be able to, to on their capital in short term, right. particularly to get brokers. I, 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 I want to go on the record habit. here as we get ready to hand it off to Closing Bell by saying I think that we've had the most exciting 15 minutes in street science history. <laughs> I, I, come I bought, on. I, come you, on. I bought 50. I was 49 bid for 50,000 Procter, and then I sold it at 61. It's a single grab. I'm going back I, I to the game. This is too exciting. for the Proctor rally.